The day is Friday, my favorite day of the week. Um, hopefully today we're gonna get this car running completely good to go. So it's developed this little thing where after it idles for like maybe, well sometimes, like five minutes it'll just shut off, turns right back on, and then it'll idle again, then it'll shut off. Very similar to what the green car did, so I'm thinking crank sensor. Um, but I'm trying to figure out where the crank sensor in this car actually is, because normally, on this motor style, the crank sensor would be right back there behind like, the oil filter housing like on the block. Um, but this one doesn't have it all. And I also realized this car is electronically carbureted. I didn't even realize that. I thought it was just the, the intake style, but this car is actually electronically carbureted right there. So there's no fuel rail in the front. There's no injectors. The fuel rail is right there. The lines come in like normal. They go through here, turn around, and right into the bottom of the... Uh, electronic carburetor so that was pretty cool but i did look online and there is a crank sensor for this car but i think all that stuff is going to be in the back side i just gotta find where so the first thing i'm gonna do today is head back to gk uh bring the vin number this time try and see they have a crank sensor in stock grab that and then figure out where in the world it goes i think it goes in the back side somewhere but i'm not quite sure but then i did get the car to run for like 45 minutes straight today uh inside the car here if i can show you i don't know if i can or not but if you know about Mark 3s, so right back here, there is your little alarm box. So the same thing I had on Miley that caused issues for the car not to start, the alarm box is like right here. If you look at the alarm box, I can't really show you because it's like up underneath the car, but there's two little splice wires that go into that one, and I'm not sure what they are for. So what I did is I unplugged it, plugged it back in, and now the car starts every time, or hopefully it still does. It starts every single time. And it'll idle and idle and idle and it won't die anymore. So that's good. So I also want to do a crank sensor, but I think those wires had something to do with it. I think, I don't know. I don't know. I just wanted to run right. I wanted to run right. And I want to drive it because the car smells like just bad gas. I think it's a mixture of bad gas and possibly the alarm thing in there and also possibly the crank sensor. So we'll see. And then also while I was looking around online, I found a bunch of videos, well not a bunch, maybe like five or six videos of people who have this same motor, the 1.8 AAM motor code that have turboed it. And it sounds pretty cool, and they're making like 150, 160 wheel horsepower, which honestly in this little tiny car wouldn't be bad at all. So I'm not sure what they did. Like there was no like description of what they did or how they did it, but it was turbo. So that could be a cool option for this car, or maybe try and fit one of the G60 style supercharger because it is still a 1.8. I don't know. I think with a nice little cam exhaust, it'll sound really good, and then maybe try and work in a, a turbo at some point, or like a supercharger, because it's cool how they did the turbo on this car. They keep this, obviously, and this runs to your turbo piping, and a lot of them use this same box and ran this air piped here to the turbo in the back. Um, so it's a cool little setup, so I don't know. We'll try and maybe get this thing boosted at some point, but I think that'd be a pretty cool little project to do. So I went ahead and had GK order me a crankshaft sensor. It'll be here tomorrow morning. They didn't have one in stock. Um, I did order one earlier this week, but it's not here yet, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. But I don't know if the one I ordered is the right one or not because I gave them the VIN number to the car to make sure it was right, and I was thinking my car was the 1.8 uh, motor code AAM, but it's actually 
uh, the 1.8 uh, engine code ABS. So this is actually the 66 kilowatt, which is 90 horsepower version. There's also a 55 kilowatt, which is like 75 horsepower. There's a bunch of versions of the 1.8, so I have the ABS motor code. So news to me. So the one I ordered from here, I believe that's be the one that's be the right one. The one I ordered offline, I don't like I said I don't know. It was hard to find um, 1.8 parts in general because like I'm not used to searching for those and most places that I normally look for parts never had the 1.8 so I don't know if what I ordered is right so I'm gonna wait for this one put that one in tomorrow but since the car was running um, and idling much better I'm gonna go home and put some plates on it real quick and then just try and drive around the neighborhood and just see uh, how it does hopefully there's no shutting off or breaking up and we'll just see how it goes gonna let this car idle for about 10 or so minutes make sure everything's good to go and then we'll go for a drive All right, so she idled for about five minutes and she just shut off. I'm gonna try and turn it back on here in a second. But besides the crank sensor, which I think the problem is, what other sensors are on here? I see one uh, right there, and there's one on the back side, but I don't really know much about this motor. So if you're familiar with this motor here and you know things to look for, things to change, do let me know because I'm not entirely sure of like everything that's going on here. All right, she turns right back on, no problem. So let her idle again and see if uh, anything changes this time. I think though, once we change out the crank sensor, all of our issues uh, should be gone because same with the green car, it would run good for a little while and then it would shut off and turn back on. And once I put a new crank sensor in that car, I've had zero issues, it's ran great. So I'm only assuming it has to send in this car. But again, I, like I said, I don't know everything about this platform. So if there's any other sensors besides the crank sensor that I should be replacing, do let me know. Um, just so I can be on top of it because like I said, this is a new platform to me, especially having a, um, a carburetor, so let me know. All right, that time lasted about two minutes and she's off again. So earlier today, when I unplugged that sensor, like wiggle the sensor around in here for the alarm, the car ran for like 45 minutes straight, no issues. So I'm gonna try that again and see if it changes anything because right now it's not run for very long. All right, so I've unplugged the two plugs that go into the alarm system. Um, so that's what I did earlier. My friend George with the pink Jetta or the pink Vento was telling me there's an immobilizer under the dash that he unplugs and replugs back in. Uh, sometimes when the car turns on and shuts itself back off and that fixes his issue uh, for a good while. But I can't seem to find that plug in at all. I'm going to keep looking, but I just don't see it. Decided to pull the entire bottom trim panel off. So hopefully now we can find that, uh, that immobilizer down there. Okay, updates. Um, I can't find the little immobilizer box that he showed me. Uh, I'll put a picture of the screen here. That's when he showed me. I have a little box uh, under the steering column here that has one, two, three, four plugs in it. His only has two. Uh, I unplugged them all, plugged them back in. Maybe that'll do something. Like I said, I unplugged the two connectors out of the um, alarm box on this side, and then I just kind of went through some more fuses up higher and just made sure the wiring's where they're supposed to be. Everything looks to be good, so I'm gonna try and start the car again and see if it'll run longer. Obviously, this might just be because of the crank sensor and I'm kind of wasting my time, but I just want to go through it to make sure everything's plugged in properly and where it's supposed to be, so I don't know. We'll see. All right. On and running, so still on she last this time. And she's dead yet again. So. I think driving the car today is probably just not a good idea. I don't feel like getting stuck somewhere out on the road. It would just be dumb. Um, so, what I've done instead, while I was waiting for it to see if it was gonna die or not, I grabbed some more of my wire brushes. I'm gonna go ahead and try and finish up the trans cleaning and the rest of the head area there. And it's more of this and get it all nice and clean. Uh, and then once we get crank sensor comes in tomorrow, then we'll put that in and then we'll try and drive it. But right now, it doesn't seem smart. I feel like dying on the road somewhere. It's so weird. Like, I idled for so long this morning. I drove it all around the driveway, like up and down, up and down and no issues after the first two times it died but now she doesn't want to run for too long so it is what it is crank sensor tomorrow for right now we'll do some more engine bay cleaning and get the rest of this metal stuff cleaned up and then we'll probably call it today possibly i don't have anything else to do today we'll see I think this is where I'll stop today with the engine bay, but we made a lot of progress. You can see the head looks way better. I even did all the way around to the bottom side. The transmission looks much, much better. Some of these small spots are really hard to get into, but I think we did a pretty good job so far. My hands are killing me, and it's also really hard to get into all these little tight crevices. Uh, aside from pulling the whole thing out, like sandblasting it, that might be, I mean, I can get it a little bit better, but I'm done for the day. But still, 
some of the uh, the oil filter housing got done. Pretty much all the trans is done on top at least. The heads that I did more of the alternator in this section over here. But otherwise, very very clean engine bay. So I do have some very exciting uh, exciting news. A buddy of mine, Mike, who had that um, that bag Genesis we saw a while ago, he's actually coming by in about two hours or so, I want to say, and he's bringing us a very cool piece that will eventually go on this car. I'm not sure quite how long to actually be able to put it on the car um but it is a very big first step towards that and i'm really excited now, i don't know the exact condition of the part um i think it's in full working order but that it's still it's a huge step for this car i think that's what we're gonna do so about two hours when it gets here i'll show you guys what that is but i am really excited and it's gonna be it's gonna be fun okay so it turns out i said two hours to actually be here in about 20 or so minutes so that's really exciting i cannot wait leave your guesses below what we're getting i'm probably gonna blur it out in the uh in the thumbnail but like it's awesome and I'm so excited for it. I think I saw. Hey buddy. Hey dude. What you got there? Turbski. I'm so excited for it. Let's see it. So I forgot that the exhaust manifold had like a giant crack on the actual part that mounts to the uh it's okay. But this is fun, so I just throw out the manifold. That's so exciting. But I'm hyped on it. Boys, we've got ourselves a little turbski. This is a KO3. Kind of heavy, look at that. But this is the first piece of the puzzle. I'm not sure how to do it completely, but I want to try and boost a little Savoy. Someone said they wanted to see the uh, the green car and the Savoy together, so there you go. And they look pretty good side by side. That's a cool shot, I like that. All right, so on to this thing right here. Actually, before that, Mike also gave me this, which is a corded Impact look at that bad boy. That's awesome and some sockets in here too, which is pretty sick So that's super awesome. Thank you for my thank you Mike for that and also this right here Let's go talk about this. Let's put it over here All right, so this is all fancy turbo here, but first off by no means am I a turbo expert I don't know everything about turbos. I know like the the loose basics of how everything works um, But I don't know everything so obviously this is our turbo here. Uh, this is the hot side back here um, you have your Input shaft, I want to say, is on this side. You'll be able to see if I pulled this off, which I might do in a second. Uh, the wastegate over here works perfectly, he said. Um, I'm obviously going to need a custom exhaust manifold to mount up to this side. Uh, but overall, it's in very, very good working order. Uh, nothing's wrong with it. So that's awesome. I'm super hyped on this. Obviously, we still need an intercooler, piping. We need the drains through the oil pan, uh, the feed lines, all that kind of stuff. We need a tune. But we have a turbo. So this is the first step in boosting the Savoy. Now, like I said, I don't know when... This will actually go in the car. There's no actual time frame for this. I just got lucky and he had it so we picked it up off him, but I don't know exactly when it'll go in the car, but at some point, boys and girls, this turbo will be in this car and we're gonna be making turbo sounds and it's gonna be so much fun. Okay, so I pulled off this piece so now we can see inside our little turbski. It's a little, but I'm so excited for it. You can see, spins nice and free i don't really feel any shaft plate i mean it wiggles a little tiny bit so maybe we have it rebuilt i don't know what's too much or what isn't but other than that i mean it feels pretty solid looks pretty good i'm really excited so this is gonna go more than likely i'll get mounted uh back down there somewhere so that's gonna be really awesome so i need to do some research on this turbo here and see what kind of power it's good for and also research on this motor and see how much it can handle obviously we're not going for anything crazy but the put down somewhere between like 150 to 200 wheel would be pretty awesome in this thing. Maybe even more than that. I don't know what this can handle. Um, but before any of that, we have to get the crank sensor in and make it run properly, obviously. And then start gathering pieces for this. Obviously, we need a front and intercooler. We need piping. We need a custom exhaust manifold. We need the uh, the oil lines. We need tuning, all that kind of fun stuff. Maybe, um, well, there's no injection on this engine at all. So, I don't know how all that's going to work. But still, at some point, this will be in there. And this thing is going to be so much fun. So, if you or someone you know has this motor or the same platform and has also boosted it, uh, get in contact with me or have them contact me because I want to talk to them a bit and see what they've done. Like I said, there's some videos on YouTube that I've watched, um, but none of the videos have any description on how they did it. And most people who have the car have since they've, they've since sold the car and you can't get any information out of them. But um i'm excited for this i'm really really excited for this project it's crazy how fast this things come together we have coilovers coming i think next week we're still waiting to hear from wheels this weekend um we have a freaking turbo now a little savoy a little savoy is going in a good direction it's kind of funny we're already gathering turbo parts for this car and i've only driven this car one actual time that's that's hilarious that's me for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna go watch some uh, some turbo videos. We're gonna how to boost this thing and make it much much faster. It's gonna be so much fun. I cannot wait. This thing is screaming and has boost sounds. It's gonna be 
It's gonna be so much fun. Don't forget, be thankful for today. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.